Okay, so you guys have a lot of homework to do on fighters. Now, when we get into the super bantamweight division, we start to see names that. Excuse me. I have a little sinus problem right now. That's why I'm sounding so nasal. I'm sorry, I apologize. Usually I'm not this nasal. But the super bantamweight division, or junior featherweight division, is one which is quite exciting because people are paying attention to it for more than one reason. We have some superstars in there. We have Leo Santa Cruz. We have an emerging superstar in Carl Frampton. Lots of people love to see Carl Frampton fight. But strangely, there is talk going around that a fighter who is an extremely good fighter uh, only has 14 pro fights. Guillermo Rigondeaux is considered by some to be boring. I don't know how that could be. And I want to elaborate on that for a minute, okay? First of all, let's 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 give you some background. Guillermo Rigondeaux beat Nonito Donaire. You'll hear about Nonito Donaire in a minute. Nonito Donaire was the WBA, I believe, champion at the time. And Guillermo Rigondeaux was the WBO champion. Okay? And he fought Nonito Donaire and he put a beating on Nonito Donaire. Okay, Nonito Donaire did knock him down in one of the later rounds. He put a beat since that time. Well, actually, let's go a little bit further backwards into time. He fought a guy called Ricardo Cordova for what I think was the, I could be making a mistake here, the WBO title. And he beat Cordova. But he knocked down Cordova in the early rounds. Cordova came back later when Guillermo was trying to infight with him, bring the fight to him, and infight with him. And he hooked Guillermo with an uppercut, and Guillermo went down, and put his glove down on the ground. And after that, Guillermo fought a different kind of fight, sort of staying way outside the range of uh, Cordova, and he boxed for the remaining rounds. He didn't take any chances whatsoever. He wasn't going on the inside for nothing. Now, that fight, people said, oh, Guillermo is boring. This is where the birth of Guillermo Rigondeaux is boring came from. Just like with Terrence Crawford. Then, Guillermo Rigondeaux, he fought Nonito Donaire, and he beat Nonito Donaire. I mean, there was a sound boxing lesson. He schooled Nonito Donaire. Fighting him from the outside again and slipping punches and just mesmerizing Nonito Donaire. He'd stand right in front of him and because of his stance and the way how he would slip punches, Nonito would approach Donaire, expose his line of attack and Donaire would just counter him with straight lefts all day. And Guillermo has decent power for a 122 pounder that's very small. He's not a big 122 pounder. He's a small 122 pounder. Since that day, Guillermo Rigondeaux has been called boring. The irony of ironies is that Carl Frampton from the United Kingdom uh, fights in a style very similar to Guillermo Rigondeaux. Very similar. In fact, Carl Frampton has the very same name, nickname, as Guillermo Rigondeau. He calls himself the Jackal. Guillermo Rigondeau is called the Jackal in Spanish. Telling me that Carl Frampton is highly influenced by Guillermo Rigondeau. Carl Frampton just so happens to be white. He so happens to be also UK. In the UK, so the fans love Carl Frampton. They love him. However, Guillermo Rigondeau is black. I mean black. Like, he's not even fair. He's not like Muhammad Ali black. He's like black, okay? He's from Cuba. And while there are a lot of fans who love Guillermo, and people visit, uh, people around the world just love to see him box, apparently that does not translate into his former promoter's top rank. They undersold and underplayed Guillermo Rigondeaux. 
to this day, they're still trying to get him out the sport. And so we hear it over and over again. He's boring. And the more people say he's boring is the more fans Guillermo gathers. So he has not defended his title since April 3rd, 2003 against Joseph Abeco, where he soundly whooped Joseph Abeco's ass. Excuse my language. Joseph Abeco was afraid to come in to Guillermo because of that straight leg. He knew Guillermo is so quick and precise that you'd bait him in and counter him and knock out Joseph Abeco. And Joseph Abeco didn't want to get knocked out. Okay? So we have the super champion or unified champion in Guillermo Rigondeaux here. Okay, I just wanted to let everybody know. But the rage, the rage, the people who get all the accolades from their promoters and other people, is Kyle Frampton, who just won his title against uh, Kiko Martinez September 6th. So he's a new champion. And Leo Santa Cruz, who is fan friendly, reminds us of Antonio Margarito to some degree or Brandon Rios in there but he's a little bit more agile more a little bit more skilled than the both of them he became he defended his uh, world championship belt August 24 2013 it's the last time he defended Manuel Robin was a defense but it wasn't really considered a defense okay because Manuel Robin's not ranked in the top 10 so that was not a mandatory defense. It was just a keep busy fight. Okay, so. The records of these guys. Leo Santa Cruz is undefeated. He has had 28 fights. 16 wins by knockout. Guillermo Riganda has had 14 fights. No defeats. No draws. And no no contests. 9 knockouts. Carl Frampton has had 19 fights. No defeats. No, no, no draws. No no contests. 13 knockouts okay these three guys basically run the division uh, Scott Quigg is the regular champion in the WBA 29 wins 2 draws 22 wins by knockout as you can see he should be fighting Guillermo Rigondeaux but he wants no piece of Rigondeaux none so Rigondeaux is like the elephant in the room in this division Okay, nobody wants to fight him. However, I do believe Leo Santa Cruz will step up. He will show that he's a man and he will fight Guillermo Rigondeaux next year. I do believe Leo Santa Cruz will give us that exciting fight. His chances of beating Guillermo are very slim, but he will fight Guillermo. And he will have Guillermo on his resume and that's all that counts. And he will show I will fight anyone, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. So, even though... Leo Santa Cruz loses his WBC strap. I'm going to give him mad props for that. I'm going to call him a true champion even if he loses. Because I believe that Leo Santa Cruz is has more kahunas than Carl Frampton and Scott Quigg. Who's calling Guillermo Rigondeaux boring. And they're afraid to fight him. But Carl Frampton will probably never fight Guillermo Rigondeaux. Because he's also called the Jackal. And I do believe his orthodox style comes off of Guillermo's um, southpaw style. So I doubt these two will ever fight one another. Because he's called a jackal. And Guillermo's called a jackal. I mean, come on. You know, but it is what it is. Of course, if these guys see Guillermo slowing down or he's getting old, they're going to jump at him. Uh, the other contender is Nehomar uh, Sermeno. He's from Venezuela. And uh, he has 22 wins, 5 defeats, 1 draw, 13 by KO, 13 wins. And the last time he actually fought or defended was August the 10th, 2013. So these are the guys in the Super Bantamweight Junior Featherweight Division. And um, you know what's the joke about that division as well that I think is very interesting? Guillermo Rigondeaux is probably the smallest junior featherweight or super bantamweight there <clears throat> he's really a small guy if you see him it's really tiny and so it's kind of funny to see that guys like Leo Santa Cruz or even Scott Quigg and Carl Frampton they don't want to even fight this guy to me that's hilarious okay well, let's go on to the next division 